All right. All right, one more day, solve by elimination. Uh, so same rules as yesterday. We just have some uh, slightly more uh, annoying kind of problems today. So we said yesterday you have to multiply one or both equations by a number to get opposite terms. So yesterday, everything, you just multiply one equation and then it would look nice. But you're going to see some problems today where that's not the case. So like we look at our example here, 9x plus 6y equals 3, 7x minus 4y also equals 3. So these threes are the same, that doesn't help us. Uh, but if we look at, raise this up a little, realize I'm up right. Uh, so I'm going to need to multiply both these equations. So I'm looking at 9 and 7, and the multiple, least common multiple between those is 63. That's kind of big. Uh, but 6 and 4, the least common multiple is 12. That sounds much better. So I want to multiply both these equations so that both of my y coefficients are 12. So 6 times 2 is 12. So multiply this top equation by 2. And then 4 times 3 is 12. And then I have opposite signs already, so I don't have to worry. I can just make both these positive, no big deal. Uh, so I'm going to distribute everything out. So top equation, negative 9 times 2 is negative 18x. Uh, 2 times 6y is 12y. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. Bottom equation, 7 times 3 is 21x. Uh, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12y. And 3 times 3 is 9. All right, so I'm going to add these two together. So negative 18 and 21 makes 3x. 12 and 12 cancels out. Uh, 6 plus 9 is 15. So after all that, it's kind of ugly. The numbers got a little bit big, but then it simplifies down uh, to a real easy kind of equation here. 3x equals 15, so x would have to equal 5. So that's part of our answer. I know x is 5. And I'm going to put it back into one of my original equations to solve for y. So I'm going to say 7 times 5. I'm going to use my bottom equation here. doesn't matter which one. Uh, minus 4y equals 3. Uh, you could even use these new equations. I wouldn't recommend it because not only are the numbers bigger, but if we had made a mistake here, uh, it's just going to compound that mistakes when I try to use it again. So I'd always go back to the original equations. Uh, so 7 times 5, 35, minus 4y, and then we're just solving a two-step equation here. It's so minus 35 to both sides. Uh, gives us negative 4y equals negative 32. We divide both of those by negative 4. We get y equals 8. So there's our ordered pair, 5 comma 8. We could put it back into our other equation just to be sure. Uh, 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. 6 times 8 is 48. And negative 45 plus 48 definitely equals 3. This checks out. Okay, so it's just a little bit more work because instead of having to multiply one equation by a number, you have to multiply both. Other than that, all the steps stay the same. Uh, so we want to be able to eliminate one of our variables, uh, simplify it down to get either x or y, substitute x or y back in the original equations to find the variable we're missing. There's your answer. Substitute both of them back in just to double check so you don't make any uh, simple mistakes. Okay. You're also going to see some easy equations. I guess they felt bad for you. Uh, one thing I will say, there's two ways you could do this one. Notice we have 3y and 3y. You could just consider, instead of adding the two equations, you could think of this as just subtracting them. If you don't want to do that, though, you could say, what if I multiply this entire equation by negative 1? And all that's going to do is it's going to flip all the signs. This positive becomes a negative. This negative becomes a positive, and then we can go back to adding them together. So this would be negative 3x, y's cancel out, negative 19 plus 25 is 6. So we divide both sides by uh, negative 3, we get x is negative 2. So there's part of our answer. Put negative 2 back into the equation, so if I take this top one, 
So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10 plus 3y equals negative 19. Add 10 to both sides. So negative 3y equals negative 9, or y equals positive 3, and we get negative 2, 3. So you don't necessarily have to write down all the steps. You've done two-step equations enough that you know the work you have to do. You get rid of the plus or minus, and you get rid of the times of division to get your answer. Okay? Uh, I can plug it back in just to be sure. Uh, 8 times negative 2 is 16. 16 plus 9, that's negative 9. Wait a minute, hold on. Confused myself here. Wait a minute, did I make a mistake? Negative 9. Wait a minute. Why should be negative 3? What did I? Oh, there it is. Okay, this is supposed to be plus 3y. This, this is why we check. Okay, so plus 3y, plus 3y, this becomes negative 3. And now this makes more sense. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And negative 16 minus 9 more is negative 25. Okay, that checks out. That's why we go back. So we don't make silly mistakes with negative. Uh, and then just a friendly reminder, uh, if you are eliminating, if both X and Y cancel uh, out at the same time, you'll be left with one of two situations. You'll either be left with nothing on the left and some number on the right, in which case the answer is no solution. Because you have a different intercept but the same slope. So parallel lines, they'll never meet. If you cancel them out, x and y both go away, and the right side goes away as well, so you're left with nothing on the left, nothing on the right, then those are the same equation, in which case you have an infinite number of solutions. Or you don't even put number, just infinite solutions. Okay? You are going to run into a couple of those today, so be careful. That's all. Let me know if you need help.